going to do a, a quick little spectrum. I, I'd like to make a little, a little spectrum around race here. So, if you have on this end of the spectrum, like hardcore, I hate all people who don't look like me, you know, racist, hate groups, hate, you know, this is hate. And then, all the way over here you have, you know, Dr. King, you know, Gandhi, and Rosa Parks, and white, black, Asian folks of all races who came together around racial justice, who marched together 50 years ago, who still work on that. And this is like that end of the spectrum, devoting their entire lives to just farming. Okay, so most of us probably fall somewhere in between on the spectrum. Um, so, I don't know where exact precisely my hidden demographic folks are, but let's just say, let's just say this hidden demographic group is right here, okay? And to the left of them, so, so here you have hate, 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 and then you have maybe another notch down here, like, you know, a white person who says, well, I don't have a problem with black people, but don't date my daughter, or <laughs> something like and then another level where you might have, you know, something like, I don't have a problem with anybody, but I just didn't stop complaining and, you know, let, you know, let slavery was 400 years ago. Why do we have to keep talking about it? You know, just like, uh, and this is part of this is denial. It's like, I'm uncomfortable talking about reality of, of race, and, and so I'd rather kind of sweeping under the carpet and just whatever. But what's interesting, in, in, when you get closer here in the denial mentality, there's actually a kernel of goodness, which is, there's a good intent, which is what Dr. King was talking about, which is the content of our character. How do we treat each other for who we are on the inside? You know, not what we look like on the outside, but as people. Like, let's just do that. So consequently, some people will say, well, I don't see race. Honest to God, I don't. I want to deal with you and who you are, and I don't see race. Which is cool. That's kind of cool on one level. On another level, it's problematic because for people of color who are dealing with daily infractions, microaggressions, or whatever you want to call it, treatment that's different, then it does matter. So, so I think what it is, is I think we're stuck right now in America. We're stuck in this either or paradigm with race, but really what we need to move forward uh, to take it to a whole other level is a both and paradigm. So imagine if we imagine if we could apply a both and paradigm right in that situation. So it doesn't have to be either or it can be both and. I both want to just deal with or, or no, I'm sorry, even before that, just take myself as an example, speaking first person, first voice, just me. As a person, I'm JG Bochelle, with the personality, who I am on the inside, my spirit, you know, what I like. That's just who I am. But walking down the street, I'm a white dude. I'm a white man. I'm a white guy. Now, and I'm also partially blind, which just kind of adds a new wrinkle. I don't even folks see my, my cane. I only started using this cane about five years ago because I have a retinal disease, which is gradually taking my vision. Um, but the prognosis is good. They're doing great research. so. It's, it's optimistic. But it's interesting because I've been a white man for years <laughs> with no experience of like otherness. But now I'm walking around tapping a cane, and so I'm quote unquote disabled, which is interesting too because I don't think of myself as disabled. But it gives me just a glimpse into sort of otherness. Um, but anyway, so imagine if you could do both and instead of being poor. Like, okay, it's true. I, I believe that you both want to just deal with people for who they are. Don't see race and we're just doing and it's also our external identifier when we walk down the street. It does matter. We we do get treated differently for how we look, you know. Again, walking down the street, I'm a white man, I'm also JG, so it's both and. So there are a lot of ways we could use both and in, in a very productive way. Um, and very productive way, I think. In other words, it can be applied on multiple levels in this conversation about race. So anyway, moving on the spectrum. So we have to now we move closer. We have this hidden demographic who, again, these folks aren't in denial. They're, they're not afraid to talk about race. They get that there's still all kinds of racial disparities. If you live in Pittsburgh, you can just walk out the door and you can see how 
East Liberty is mostly African American, still, uh, Homewood is mostly African American, and Shady Sides, when you take Pan Avenue, like white, black, white, black, white, black, all the way from downtown. You know, we're still largely segregated in the city. Like, a lot of people get uncomfortable saying segregation because it's like, well, didn't segregation end 50 years ago? And even if he's speaking, just that observation saying, well, let's take a walk in the city, some might look at me and say, oh, he's liberal. <laughs> But a little thing, it's not liberal, it's not conservative, it's just, let's look outside and take a walk. So, uh, so folks here sort of get that, you know, they don't talk about race all the time, or want to talk about race all the time, but they sort of get that there's some things we haven't dealt with yet, so we need to deal with it. But, and coming over here, you have more sometimes, and this isn't a perfect model, a broad kind of idea in which for us to, to, to talk about some of these, these concepts. But so you have folks maybe coming out of academia and an activist modality who, whose work is tremendous and necessary. Like all this, this work they're talking about quantifying the disparities that pipeline to prison from young black boys in school and how they're getting treated on the street. And this is real. So you know they're talking about all this. They're talking about white privilege. And, and, but the problem is, again, folks here may go to one of these events, and they get it, and they want to support it, but they don't consider themselves activists. They don't, they don't march, they don't have a sign, they don't, that's not their personality. They, and they end up feeling, again, maybe vaguely guilty just for being white. So it's like, back to the both and thing. If I'm stuck in um, guilds, you know, this sort of sense of like, I have this privilege as a white man. That guilt is a non-generative emotion. You can't grow, you can't build out of that guilty guilt. But then, the denial is also non-generative. Because if you're in denial, you can't change the problem until you know you have the problem. But, you know, if I say, I'm a white man and a human being, that doesn't have to be controversial. So if I, if I deny my white manness, you know, that, that becomes a problem with the denial, but if I focus only on that, that also isn't holistic. So, it's, it's, it's almost crazy how elegant and simple the one idea can be. Because I can stand here and just say, I'm changing the animal white man, and let's hope we can get to the point where that, it only matters who I am on the inside, but how do we get there? So, I don't have to feel like weird, funny for being a white guy with privilege, and, awkward, and I don't have to deny that either. So what I want to do is bring my whole humanity, so each person's whole humanity, to this conversation, to the process. And imagine if we could clear out those negative emotions and not deny anything, not wash over anything, not minimize anything, water it down, but we get rid of the denial, we get rid of the guilt trip, we get rid of that negative space, then we have all this power and, and that's the thing, I feel like there's so much, this is a huge, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, the, the, not potential energy, but the words just flow out of my head now. But with the hidden demographic, I'm talking about power on a level of an untapped resource. That's what I was searching for. It, it, it's an untapped resource because folks want to engage. So, so they go here, they go here, and, and they have no place to go. So, I want to engage the hidden demographic because I think that potentially represents a lever, lever, however you like to say that word, 